Hi again, it's Sister Marfia, and welcome back. I wanted to continue talking about 2 Samuel 11. We're talking about David and Bathsheba. And specifically, there's so many um, things that you can discuss just from 2 Samuel 11, but I'm speaking specifically about presumptuous sin. Um, that was my Bible. Uh, that was a Bible that I, uh, chapter that I was reading for today, and that just God just sprang that out in my in my in my spirit. Um, talking about presumptuous sin, that what is the definition of presumptuous sin? What is presumptuous sin? Um, when I I think it was 2012, I said in a previous video that I learned what the word about presumptuous sin. I had to actually look it up. Because, you know, word root is extremely important and it is something that I'm trying to discipline myself. I'm asking God for to, to, to give me wisdom. I want to discipline myself to do more of um, word study because I'm finding out that uh, for a lot of people when they read the word of God, a lot of times they're confused because they, they may not understand it, the words may look very straight, uh, plain, and forward, but they are not thinking in terms of history. They're not thinking in terms of culture. They're not thinking in terms of the time that the words were said. Oh, um, a certain phrase. It's not that. It's not one of those things that people like to say. Well, the Bible is not true because man. Or, it's not that kind of foolishness. It's that what may be said at a certain time, certain way that is said. You have to know what it means because it's just like in our language. We speak English. Another person speaks, say, Spanish or French. When the, the thing gets translated, a person says something French, when it translates in English, sometimes it doesn't translate the way the person wants to have it said. And so it's important to understand the root meaning of things. This is very important. I'm not talking about trying to go deep and trying to sound super whatever. I'm talking about really understanding the meaning of what was being said. You know, there are scriptures, for example, like um, what the Bible talks about, the braiding of hair and so now a lot of people won't braid their hair and they won't do anything to their hair and they they keep their hair as as crazy as they want because they think it's a sin to make it look pretty but they don't understand that what we're that scripture me was talking about at the time is people think that weaves are new weave is not new we just need to you weaves have been been around since romans the roman women wore these elaborate weaves back then they wore these elaborate hair pieces victorian women in the 18th 17th 18th century wore elaborate hair pieces and what the paul was saying is don't get caught up in that don't let you everything everything be about that don't let your spirituality be about that he wasn't saying it's a sin to braid your hair he wasn't saying it was a sin to do your hair and make your hair look pretty again because we don't understand culture, the time that certain things were written, we get it confused. And then you have on the other side, of course, where people look at it and say, well, that doesn't apply to us. Listen, sin was sin back then, and sin is still sin, sin is still sin today. Boy, I'm having a time getting words out. <laughs> anyway, so again, I was talking about presumptuous sin, and I was trying to give you uh, the Bible, a Bible definition, one of the definitions of, of presumptuous sin, Presumptuous, the word means boiling over, bubbling over, okay? So that doesn't even seem to make sense um, from what we know of, say, the Webster definition of the word presumptuous, okay? But it'll all come together, so I kind of want to continue to go over that. So again, we're talking about 2 Samuel 11. We're talking about um, David and Bathsheba. David was supposed to be out at war, but instead he was in Jerusalem on his rooftop looking out over his, his kingdom and the homes that were um, surrounding the, the, the kingdom. And um, he happened to see a woman, um, turned out her name is Bathsheba, bathing on her roof. Now, one of the things that I'd mentioned, and this is not in the scripture, this is it's one of those things where the Bible doesn't break things down all the time. And so I think that for a lot of time we look at the Bible, we think that things happen, and then this day this happened, the next day this happened. There are things that you read in the Bible that happen hundreds of years apart. But because we, we're reading the Bible, look back, oh, and then the next day this will happen, this will happen. And so a lot of times you can fill in the, in the blank spaces um, just by virtue of being human, you can fill in the blank spaces. Um, and so I want you to know this is not biblical. This is my filling in the blanks with um, what I would 
presume happened. Um, I believe in my heart, this is not biblical. Like Paul said, I'm speaking that. <laughs> I just believe that he's seen that woman on that roof before. And it just so happened, I really believe that in my heart. There's no scripture for that. There is no scripture for that. Don't get, don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. I believe that that's the reason he probably didn't go to war. He knows because back then only men fought in wars. And um, he knew that the men would be gone. And it's more than likely that the woman was married. It's very likely because the marriage was, uh, is, still is, but back then it was very, very important. And so by 13, 14 or so, these girls were married already. Yes, she could have been a widow, but he knew one thing. That is a 99.9% .9 chance that that lady was married. And so I believe that he's seen it before. I think he's seen her before. I think it's not his first time up on that roof at that time of the day, looking in that direction. Because he can see the whole kingdom, you know, within a certain radius, he can see his kingdom. So anyway, um, but again, we're talking about presumptuous sin. And so he saw her and... He sent, this time he didn't go to war, and he sent um, one of his servants to go investigate who she is. So before he sent the servant to go investigate who this woman is, he did not know. He did not know her name. He had did not know for sure whether or not she's married. He did not know whose wife she is. And But the only thing that he knew was adultery sin. But when the messenger came back and gave him all the information that he knew he needed, he now knows. He now has knowledge. First he was ignorant, now he's no longer ignorant. So he knows now that her name is Bathsheba. He knows that she is somebody's wife. He knows that not only is she somebody's wife, she's the wife of one of his soldiers. And he knows, again, that adultery is sin. It's still a sin. Doesn't matter that you're king, it's sin. And a lot of, uh, let me just put this out, a little bit of history is uh, some of us may not know. Back in those days for a king to become king over Israel, they had to, and remember they only had the Pentateuch, remember they only had the first five books, they didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, that's much later. They didn't have a Bible, okay, like we have, we have a Bible with all these books compiled. They had a Torah, which was just the four, first five books, okay? So they didn't have what we had. They did not have the Holy Spirit. But back then, the king, before he became king, he had to sit and write out the Bible. The, the, I'm sorry, the Torah. He had to sit and write out the words. And he had to write them out verbatim. He couldn't just write them in his own words. It wasn't an essay. He had to copy verbatim what he saw. And the reason that this was done is, is to make, get the word to saturate. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? That's something I strongly try to do. It's very, it's a great way to live, okay? Anyway, so he sent for her. Uh, he, he, knowing everything that he knows, knowing those four important things, he told the servant, go get her and bring her to me. And he had the, 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 them sit, set his room up and everything and make it pretty and smell nice. And the Bible says that he slept with Bathsheba. He slept with her. I don't want to focus on the pregnancy and the baby and all that thing. I want to focus on presumptuous sin. Here's the thing. The Bible says in um, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there is no temptation taking us such as is common to man, but God is faithful and will with that temptation make a way of escape. The woman being on the roof and a man being men are attracted to women and women are attracted to men. That's the way God created it. The man looking out and seeing a woman and thinking, yum, that's not, that's not unnatural. Seeing with his eyes the woman, that's not unnatural. That's not a problem. The problem is when your eyes see and your brain register woman on roof, naked, not your wife, go when that registers and you're still standing there going, oh my gosh, ooh, look at, ooh, that, that is the problem. See, the temptation of the woman in the, in the, on, uh, taking a bath, that's life. That's always going to happen. Like I said, I'm not tempted with cigarette. I'm not tempted with, with uh, cigarette and weed, uh, things like that. I don't, I don't get it. I'm not tempted with alcohol. I'm sensitive to wine, so I don't even drink wine. Um... I'm not tempted with those things. I go through other temptation. One of my biggest temptation is, is food. I cook and I could make these uh, massive meals and I could eat a lot. 
And so that's one of the vices in my life. Um, before I, I gave my life to Christ, men, men, oh, men, oh, men, beautiful. I could not. And then after, even after I gave my life to Christ, there was a struggle. But I have prayed and I asked God, Lord, because you said with the temptation, you make a way of escape for me to bear it. I don't want this to be a problem in my life. And so I have given this over to God. What temptation, what thing do you know is wrong? You know that it's wrong, but you constantly keep doing it. Now, see, you're a Christian, so you know it's wrong. You know it's wrong not just because, uh, you know, your mom probably taught you somewhere in your life, you know, the difference between right and wrong. And it's not wrong because the Bible said so. It's wrong because God said so. It's not wrong because the Bible said so. It's wrong because God said it. Now I know you're thinking, but God, yeah, 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 you're right. But God said so. That's why the Bible said so. Because sometimes I heard somebody talking about this and I love the way he said it. A lot of times we get caught up in people say, why is that wrong? Because the Bible said so. And that's what we think of. But if you think it's wrong because God said it's wrong, think that's different. Because see, for a lot of people, the Bible can just become ah, any cliche, any, any, any book out there, any insignificant uh, uh, thing. But when you think, wait a minute, God has a problem with this. God says it's wrong for you to sleep with somebody's wife. God says it's a problem for you to sleep with somebody's husband. Then all of a sudden, it makes, it makes a big difference. There are a lot of people who do things wrong knowing that the Bible says it. But when you teach people, God said it. Don't just tell them the Bible said it. Tell them God said it. But when these temptations come, God is always, we don't always listen. I know I didn't always listen. My gosh, I didn't always listen. I've got myself into so much mess before I dedicated and committed my life to Christ. My thing after my husband left, I didn't want to be alone. I hated to be alone. And at the time, now I love it, unfortunately. <laughs> but if the, the men would come. And I, 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 instead of saying, you know what, Lord, no, 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 I really want to serve you because I really wanted to serve God. Yeah, I want to serve you, no, Lord, no, no, no. I would see how far this would go. And sometime it went where I didn't want it to. What does the Bible say? After the temptation, temptation brings sin. After sin is death. And so this is why God made a way. Run, Marfia, run, run, Marfia, run. You see, a man comes in my situation. That was one of my issues. He comes along and of course he's going to have the looks. Of course he's going to have the things that I find attractive in a, in a man. See, I'm different from you. What you may like, I may not like it first, vice, or vice versa. So the kind of man that's going to come to me is the kind of man that's going to make me go, mm, ooh, mm. but God is saying, no, run, run, take off, go, drive, drive. And I'm sitting there going, oh my God, but he is cute. Mm. And then he'll. He's coming closer and closer and closer. And I'm sitting there and God's like, go, take off, put the car in drive. And he's coming closer and closer. And I'm like, oh my God, he's so cute. Oh my God. Oh, look at the way he's dressed. Oh, oh my gosh. His shoes are clean. <laughs> and so next thing you know, I am in. I'm in because now he's engaged me in conversation. And God is saying, you could still say, have a nice day and go. And so I'm sitting there and next thing I know, that what was not a sin now is a sin. So what happens is what with us is we know it's wrong and we say, well, God, I know I shouldn't do it, but I'm just going to, I'm going to ask for forgiveness when I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask forgiveness. That is presumptuous sin. It's when that man is approaching me. I'm like, oh God, but he's so cute, Lord. And God is saying, Marfia, drive. And I'm thinking, Lord, I, 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 okay, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm, I know it's wrong, I know it's wrong. Presumptuous sin. Presumptuous sin is when you know it's wrong. You know it's wrong and you do it anyway. You know it's wrong and you still do it. The scripture says, Romans 8, 37 says, we are more than conquerors through Christ. We have Christ. We have the Holy Spirit. We have a way of escape. Uh, also, 1 John 4, 4 says, Greater is God that is in me than he that is in the world. We have a means of escape. David had a way to not mess that up. David had a means to not mess up. Presumptuous sin. I'll do one more video.